I'm just going to go from the dome because I want this to be a natural flowing conversation. So there is another elephant in the room that I would like to address. Um, and it is basically how black families normalize toxic communication from like elders or people of higher roles within the family. Um basically expecting you to subject yourself to certain forms of toxic communication and abuse because of who someone is to you. We're taught that out of respect, you don't, you know, say certain things or that you have to subject yourself and be still accessible to people who do not respect your energy, who do not respect you. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a lot of us, my generation and younger that are waking up and we're seeing the cycles we're seeing that yeah this is my mom or my dad or my elder um but the way that they talk to me isn't right i don't have to and not only that but i don't have to stand for it i don't have that don't mean you got to get buck wow but that you don't have to allow them access to your energy either a lot of us are seeing that there are a lot of our elders that are unhealed and don't know the significant and significance and the severity of their trauma and their um wounds you know what i'm saying they're emotional wounds and because of that they're inflicting pain whether it be mentally physically emotionally or whatever on you through retaliation of whatever they have going on in their life and it puts you in a place to where you can't truly expand to where you need to be um mental you know abuse doesn't have to be physical all the time it's verbal abuse emotional abuse narcissism all of those things that leave that are even worse than physical abuse. Physical abuse you can heal from. Like you get a scar and you know it turns it, it it heals. But verbal abuse, emotional abuse, narcissism, and the effects of all of that stuff, it penetrates your heart. It changes your mentality and your energy and it changes your mentality about yourself. You know what I'm saying? A lot of those things have the same symptoms and effects of PTSD. It's an actual stumbling block to your growth. And to tell a younger person that you have to subject yourself to this energy because of who someone is to you, it's crazy. The same expectation that we have to consider that this person might not be here forever or because this is, this is my mom or this is my dad. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I have to consider handling the way that i approach them is the same way that they should be expected to do that and if they can you gotta let them go something else that has been normalized like growing up in black families um you know i don't know if y'all have ever seen tommy on love and hip-hop but it was a lot of outrage on how she handled her daughter you know but that it um at school it was like a school incident or something but that is something that is real it's a lot of moms out here that are unhealed or in unhappy marriages or whatever and when they or in uh, unhappy with their job and all it takes is for them to have a bad day and they come home and it's you bitch and you hoe and you trifling and they leave these imprints on you and it, it matters that that changes you moving forward it changes how you um you know what i'm saying because these are the same people that three days later they love you so much and you still love them even though they talk to you like that but then you get in these relationships and you accept it from men whether even if it's not physical but just the emotional abuse and manipulation because there's something that's been normalized my thing is if it has to be normalized it's not normal you know what i'm saying like patience is a virtue children are not perfect you know what i'm saying if you come home and their room isn't clean or you know they lacking or they're being lazy you don't have to come at them verbally you don't have to beat them a lot of times it's as simple as taking things away you know what i'm saying like our children their mental state is everything. And when you start to beat at them and take, you know, take away from them, like, or say things to diminish them, that, that builds them into who they are today. And so it's hard to escape that when you're actually in the household. But as an adult, you should not feel shame to disconnect from those energies. You have to do what you have to do to guard yourself and your heart and your energy so that you can walk into what you have to walk into. Those things stick with you. 
it leads, it pushes over into adulthood. And, you know, you have some, some parents that, you know, they're still controlling in adulthood, whether it be withholding their resources or, you know, just inflicting pain on you randomly because they had a bad day and they call you when they, you know, whatever, or you make a decision that isn't favorable for them, or you make a decision that they, they don't want you to make. It's like, we're all on our own journeys. You cannot control grown people. It's still grown people out here turning flips and tricks to try to prove themselves to their parents or to try to, you know, display a certain image so that they're accepted because they never got in that acceptance or full acceptance. You know what I'm saying? From their parents. So it's toxic as hell. At the end of the day, you cannot control another being, even if you birthed them, even if, you know, you came before them. All you can do is plant and water the seed. If they choose to go their own way, why totally disrespect the relationship and make it to where it's an uncomfortable environment? Be their comforter. Be there for them when they, you know, fall flat on their face. That don't mean you got to be there financially. You know, we're adults and we're we grown, but you have to allow your children to make mistakes. You have to allow your children to take their own path. Your children won't always do what you want them to do. And then in some situations, it's, you know, the the parents being jealous because of who you are and what you're on. And they hear how you talk and they hear how happy you are with yourself or how confident you are. And they resent it. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a lot of different things that... um motivate the abuse but you as an adult especially do not have to subject yourself to that because of who somebody is to you some parents feel like because you're theirs you're their possession they get to bully you and abuse your energy just because and it becomes a cycle it becomes a cycle and our generation is waking up to this is not normal yeah, I know the Bible says that you respect your parents so that your days may be long, but it also tells parents not to provoke your children. So at the end of the day, should if you're over here healing and happy and growing, somebody that's avoiding their healing and happiness and growth, should you don't have to allow them to intrude on your energy. You don't. And it might not be comfortable. You know, you might wonder, like, I, you know, I never want anything to happen to to my so-and-so, my TT or my mom or my dad. Um, and we're not on speaking terms. But that same energy that you have to consider that with, they should be expected to do the same thing. You do not have to grow up in a trap house or be the... Um, the mother figure of the household or you know what i'm saying the father figure of the household and you was only five to say that you have childhood trauma childhood trauma can be as simple as someone manipulating your energy because they're unhappy with whatever situation they're in and these babies are innocent our children are innocent they deserve even if we don't fuck with our own life we should fuck with them enough to pour love into them you know even if we come home and the room isn't how we want it to be sometimes instead of beating ass or calling you out your name you dumb bitch trifling hoe da 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 the the same energy of removing things from them it does more you literally have to guard your heart this shit is spiritual it's spiritual. You literally have to guard your heart. Your energy depends on it. Your your the, those things leave imprints on your your on your heart. It changes your opinion about yourself. These are people that you look up to. You know what I'm saying? Like because as much as we want to say that toxicity is horrible, those same toxic people, they love you too. They don't mean that they don't love you. It just means that they're it's some type of healing that they're refusing to do, and you don't have to subject yourself to that. Then you have those parents that are so hell bent on teaching you lessons. You know, they they use their resources as a form of control they use their energy as a form of control so if you don't make the decisions that they want you to make they start to use their energy as control or they start to remove resources from you but in my opinion it's like 
you're so busy trying to teach lessons to where you're missing out on the actual bond of the, the, the all all children. We have our own journeys. It's some things that our parents have went through and they don't want us to go through them, which is understandable. But it's some things like our, our paths is are already created. It's some paths we're still going to take, even if our parents took them and they warn us not to. That might be the path that we need to go on to walk into whatever we're supposed to walk into. But abandoning and manipulating your children as a form of control to teach them lessons, um, it, it does more pain than it does good. You should never have to be in a good mood, having a good day, and then see a number call your phone. And this goes beyond family. You see a number call your phone and your whole stomach just sink because you don't know what's going to be thrown at you. You know, we're all in charge of our own energy. And if it means you literally have to block that person out, it don't mean you have to hate them. It don't mean you have to have any animosity in your heart. But you are, your energy depends on it. Literally. Literally. You don't subject yourself to abuse because of who somebody is to you. You don't have to do that. That has been normalized. It's foul. And it is a reason why so many people are still stuck and unhealed. Block. The obsession with control is a stumbling block. Sometimes it's easier to walk alone without support than to have toxic ass support. The only that that's obsessed with control. Sometimes it's easier to just withdraw completely. Let people choose to go heal on their own. And nine times out of ten, they won't. And it sucks. It really does suck. But at the end of the day, we we have things to do and to move forward to. And when you have somebody continuously pulling on your energy, pulling on your energy sporadically, it's hard to focus on those things, especially when you have your own children that you're trying to break generational curses with. So I don't know if somebody needed to hear that, but I just think that it needed to be said. It don't have to be like that. And it shouldn't be like that at all, at all. It's okay to step away from somebody for, a, for for a few years. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to step away or ignore phone calls or block or whatever you have to do to guard your energy. Your children need your energy. They need you at the best you that you could be. And if somebody is stealing it or harvesting it, then you have to cut ties. Literally. Literally. It's too much stuff I have to do in this lifetime. It's too much stuff that I have to prepare my daughters from. You know what I'm saying? Um, to subject myself to those those type of energies. Before I walk around with toxic ass support, I will walk around by myself. If every time you get close to the to the light and close to fulfillment, somebody bring a dark ass energy and distracts or deters or discourages you from what you have straight and directly on your path, it has to be removed. Your energy depends on it. Your success depends on it. Your mentality depends on it. You know what I'm saying? Your future depends on it. It is okay to separate. It's okay to separate. You could pray for them. You could love them. But you are not indebted to someone because of their role in your life and period. I release all forms of control right now. I release any forms of control that have kept me stagnant. I release any forms of control that have made me second guess myself. I release any forms of control that have made me um, doubt my true abilities. I release any forms of control that have um, devastated my self esteem and I take my power back. I stand in it even if I have to stand alone. Even if I have to stand alone. I'm not a punching bag when you're mad. I'm not a target when you're bored. And I'm not a resource that you could just absorb energy from when you're trying to avoid your own healing. I'm not. And I will not be to anybody. Not a lover, not a mother, not a father, not an elder, not a friend. And it is okay to release those things. It is okay to rock it out by yourself with your cock out until you're, the, the people around you can either get right and snap together or they can just stay where the fuck they at. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, that all of that shit keeps you stagnant. All of that shit keeps you second guessing. All of that shit is negative energy in your field that is a distraction. 
And you don't have to subject yourself. And I know I said that so many times this video, but you do not have to subject yourself to that. I know y'all like, damn, this bitch got trauma. And you know, it be like that. But at the end of the day, I'm seeing so much stuff. Like when you healing, you see things so vividly. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's things that have been normalized. And like I said, if it has to be normalized, the shit is not normal. It is okay to heal. It is okay to detach. No matter who it is. No matter who they are to you. It does not matter. I have things that I need to do. I have objectives and goals that I need to make. And I can never do that if I just got people pulling on my energy. You know what I'm saying? I can never do that. I... I want to be a great mother. I never want to call my children out their name. I never want whatever I'm going through and whatever is unhealed in me to spill over into them. And then it's another cycle. We breaking cycles, period. Now, right now, I'm not, I release all of that bullshit. I release it. It's gone. The last thing <laughs> that is on my heart, understand when you start to take your energy back, people get mad. They get real mad. They'll say other things to make you second guess yourself. They'll make you feel like, oh, well, because, you know, in this season, it just feel like I'm just everybody. Just go. You know what I'm saying? And then the people's first thing will be, well, it's you with everybody else. And no, keep that is not your energy. Whatever you feel, stick to it. Stay in that. You know what I'm saying? And God will correct you if you are, are being ir irrational or illogical or whatever. But at the end of the day, you do not, if something is making you feel overwhelmed or uncomfortable, that is not what you, you have, you do not have to subject yourself to it. You come first. And it's so crazy because I've always been scared to put myself first. I've always thought that it was selfish or vain or, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's not right to love on me first and it's absolutely everything i can't love you correctly if i can't love myself enough i can't love my children correctly if i can't love myself enough you know what i'm saying so it's like standing at standing at if you feel like something is wrong if you feel like somebody is abusing your energy if you feel like somebody is emotionally inflicting pain on you whether it be intentional or non-intentional subtract yourself from it and if they can't get right it's not me i've been to I've lived in multiple different states, been to 14 different schools. I'm used to, uh, to, to to detaching from people. And I know it might not be healthy, but at the end of the day, life goes on. I refuse to be stagnant. I refuse to be stagnant. I refuse to be, be mute. I refuse to abuse myself by allowing other people to abuse me. No. These videos aren't to play victim because I'm not a fucking victim. I'm not a fucking victim at all. All of this stuff is needed for me to go through. All of this stuff was needed for me to go through. I'm not mad at anybody. These, these, this path was created for me intentionally so that I may extract the lessons and share it or whatever God is doing with me or so that I may heal or so that I may be a witness. All of this stuff I'm supposed to go through. So I'm never getting up here pretending to be a victim, but this is what I'm finding as I'm healing. And as I heal, I know that I confess my sins to one another so that we may all heal together. It sucks that these topics are so relatable, but it's a thing. And it's something that we could sit up here and talk about loving hip hop and all this other stuff, but we can't talk Talk about fucking childhood trauma and how to heal from it. That's the fucking problem. We've been programmed to shut the fuck up about the shit that matters. And I'm not doing it. Like, let's address the elephant in the room.